at least the expenses, if you use their accounts, that should work because the income statement will have the expenses on the tax return and you should be okay. With the furniture and fixture, it's gonna end up being a mess if, if you're using this for taxes and you do not tie out your furniture and fixtures to what's on the tax return because then when you try to calculate your depreciation and when you try to sell furniture and equipment or dispose of it, you're gonna run into, like I say, a mess. So this is one of those things where I'm trying to find, where like, you might not think it's a big deal for the first few years, but then you get five years into it and then you, and then you realize that you need to sell or dispose of something and it's like, and then it's a mess, okay? So you wanna get it right the first time. This is one of those things, measure twice, cut once what rather than tinkering okay so i've that's my spiel so i'm going to change the name of this one to furniture and fixture instead of furniture and equipment drop down edit and it's going to be called i'm going to call it furniture and fixture fixture because that's the category that's in my subletter subledger fixture fixtures I think it has an S, doesn't really matter. Okay, so let's save that. And then, so now I have that. Now I'm gonna make another one called just equipment. So I'm gonna make another one that's just called machinery and equipment. Machinery and equipment. That's another category, so I'll just mirror that. Let's make a new one. And I'm gonna say this is gonna be do, 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 an asset account. It's gonna be a fixed asset, property, plant, and equipment. And I'm gonna call it uh machine i'll call it it's a fixed asset and they've got all these categories for the fixed assets here there's machinery and equipment and then i'm just going to call it machinery and equipment so then we'll say save it so and i'm not so worried about the tax categorizations because i haven't found that the software is really great at just pulling into the tax software and everything just working beautifully you still have to do data input into the tax software i'll keep testing it and see if i get to a point where I think that works good. But these are our two accounts. Now, what I have here is everything on the balance sheet is in this furniture and fixture. I'm gonna say that the 5,000 that we purchased last time was for machinery and equipment. So I could go into this account and I could change the actual transaction. I could drill down on this journal entry and change the account. But I'd like to keep the audit trail, which is typically the case, and then make another journal entry to break it out to the proper balance. So I'm gonna use a journal entry to do that, but because there's only two accounts impacted, it's probably easier, or we can just use the registers to do that. So what I wanna do if, over here is I wanna move 5,000 of it uh, into machinery and equipment from furniture and fixture. These are both balance sheet accounts, therefore both have registers. I'm going to use the machinery and equipment one because that's the e increase. So maybe it would be easier to think about the increase. So I'm going to view the register, select the drop down. I want to make a journal entry and we'll make it just as of the end of February 022824. And we're going to say that this is going to be to break out fixed assets in accounts that match sub ledger on tax software or something like that it's going to be an increase of 5000 the other side's going to go into furniture and fixture so this should just be a journal entry and this is a journal entry because we're, there's no other form to do this obviously we, there's there's no normal form for for recategorizing your fixed assets because that's not something that happens in the normal process therefore we default to a journal entry but instead of just entering a journal entry it might be easier to use the journal entry form with the registers as we're doing here all right let's save it and then boom it's been done let's go to the balance sheet and check it out i'm going to run it again run it and then so now we can see that we have 5,000 in the machinery and equipment, 98,000 in uh, the furniture and fixture, and it went into this account with the use of a journal form. If I go into the journal form, it doesn't take me to the register, but it takes me to a journal entry with the debits and the credits. I might copy the memo on both sides here. So it's on either side that you care to look at. And then let's go back 
okay, so now in my sub ledger, I can double check that. I can be like, okay, does that make sense? Has sense been made? I think I have made sense because I took my dollar bill and exchanged it for pennies. I don't, I've made sense from, okay. I don't need a calculator because that adds up to 98,000 right here and 5,000 for my sh machinery and equipment and furniture and fixture. So boom, 98 and five, that looks good. We don't have to do anything to the accumulated depreciation as of yet in terms of the dollar amount because we've only had accumulated depreciation on the 98,000 furniture and fixture, not yet on the machinery and equipment. But if there was stuff in the, in the furniture and equipment or the accumulated depreciation for these accounts, then you'd have to think about how you're going to deal with it. Now, now we have to deal with this account, however. So now we've got the accumulated depreciation. Notice over here, what happens is we get each list of each item in the sub ledger, which has its own calculation of depreciation because they were purchased at different points in time. And then we get the total accumulated depreciation per category. So this is the current month, but we, we currently have 7,500 before the current period. So, so, th and then, so then, and then we have the same for down here. So then the question is, well, I could over here, the easiest thing to do is I just have one accumulated depreciation account for all categories, but it might be better if we had just like mirror this. So we have an accumulated depreciation for each category so that I can see both the purchase price, the cost and the related accumulated depreciation, the expensing of it, the decrease in the value uh, or the allocation of the cost to get also the book value per category. So to do that, I can use sub ledgers to kind of to kind of do that. So let's let's do that method. So I'm going to go back on over here and I'm going to go back. Let's open up the hand boogie. Let's go into our chart of accounts again. And I'm going to say, let's first make this accumulated depreciation. I'm looking for the fixed assets. I'm looking, I'm looking, I went too far, I think. Uh, okay, assets. And where are the fixed assets? Don't day for crying out loud a star. There they are. Okay, so now we're going to say that we have uh, the accumulated depreciation. So let's let's make this one a sub account. Now, now here's the question here. We could make one parent account for furniture and fixture and then have the sub account for the cost and then have the accumulated depreciation as under each of them so that the parent account doesn't have anything in it. But we can try to kind of shortcut that. I can try to say, well, I'm just going to use the furniture and fixture uh, as the parent account, even though there's something posted to it, and then add the accumulated depreciation as the sub account. So let's try that and see what it looks like. So 